Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about searching, increasing your sales, and we're going to base this on fact and not conjecture, which is most of what I hear and see online, uh, across YouTube, or anywhere else really in that matter. And this conversation was brought up because several people ask questions on whether they should end their listings and relist them as a sell similar item to actually try and increase their ranking on eBay. That sounds all fine and dandy. Um, it's supposedly based on actual facts when, when people have researched this. The problem is there's no baseline for any of the facts that they are stating. If you end a listing like that and then relist it and it sells, there's no way to know whatsoever if that would have sold anyway had you not done that. Now we're going to show you a bunch of actual figures from companies who get paid for a living. That's all they do is figure out statistics and look into actual sales and history and online reselling in general and come up with statistics that are actually industrial-wide standards for this industry. There's many sites that do this. The majority of all those figures come out the same. So these aren't just fake figures. These are from industrial reports from many different organizations. The gist on it is, though, that you have no baseline. If you're doing any kind of test, you need to have a baseline to compare it to. For like in the example of ending it and then relisting it as self similar, there's no baseline. You would need both listings up at the same time, the new one and the old one, to compare it to. That's how you do a scientific study, and it's the only way to do one. Basically, you have to have a baseline. The evidence that I'm going to show you here is based on actual facts and surveys. Now, before someone says, why would they listen to me? I know nothing. I actually took database design and construction as well as networking, engineering, and administration. So I do have a full grasp on it. I've taken many coding classes, scripting, the whole works, PHP, Visual Basics, HTML, CSS, all the stuff that ties into online business. I've taken those classes. Again, I'm not trying to brag. I just have a working knowledge of a database. eBay is a database. Amazon is a database. Search banks are databases. This is all database tied in. They're all tied in with scripts and other aspects of it. That's how this all works. A lot of the people who are talking or making these statements don't have an overall understanding of it. On top of that, I spent six years in college to earn the degrees that I do have. So I have spent time researching and doing the proper methods for this. Let's actually hop over to the screen right now and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're going to look at two actual sites. Now there's a bunch of them. I just picked these two since they had more tied in knowledge and I wouldn't have to go to as many sites to show you. This is 40 amazing online shopping and e-commerce statistics. This is from a month ago. This is new. This is this year. This isn't some past information. These are all legit numbers. They're tied from many other sites like business.com, which is well known. Small biz trends and a lot of these other places are well known and well trusted. Now, there's some basic statistics on your 87% of shoppers today use e-commerce reviews to decide whether to buy. 77% of those shoppers buy online. Now, these are true facts. Amazon has similar facts. Google has similar facts. One key thing to think about when you're actually deciding whether to end the listing and then sell similar is that the majority of people these days, almost 60% buy some of the surveys, but it's definitely a majority, do not go straight to eBay. So when you end an item like that, you are killing any chance of it ranking on Google, which is key for what's going on. If you paid attention to eBay, they have specifically said that they are trying to rank their items on Google. If you do a search on how long it takes to rank, it could take 60 days plus to 90 days just to rank something. That's for a site in general. It's not counting your items. So if you're actually ending them quickly or even after, say, a month or two, you're killing those search results. The majority of people are not going to go to eBay to start off with, so they probably won't see your item no matter what you do. Now, I know somebody's going to tell me that sometimes when you relist like that, you do get a boost in it. Now, there is a slight boost because eBay has another search option where you can search by newest item listed. So yes, if someone's searching by newest item listed and your item just happens to be up when they're doing it, it's going to show up that way for a few days. And that's it. Then you lose all the boost from the actual Google ranking. I would rather have the majority of people which are searching through Google or Chrome search than those few people who are searching for a newly listed item on eBay, which is a very small percentage versus the entire field of people that may be looking for that item. 
That's key. That's key information that you have to understand. Many people don't go to eBay to look for this. It's a lot of younger people who do that. So keep in mind on what you sell. It really matters. The most important factor in every industrial standard, eBay will tell you that, Amazon will tell you that, and Google will tell you that, is that the keyword is 100% essential to start with. So if you don't have the proper keyword, nothing else you do could really save you from the listing. Second, you have to have good pictures. So again, the keyword is the essential. The second best thing on that is to have it ranked on Google. So for those of you who sell on Amazon, you should know already that you don't end listings. You just let them sit until they actually rank and get higher up on the feed. If it's not a good item, it's not going to sell anyway. There's still other groups that use Alexa and other search ways to find something. They'll speak into their phone. These are statistically proven numbers industrial-wide. Industrial-wide, that's the key. You have to have baselines or something close to empirical evidence, and this is the evidence right here. If you want to see this article, I would recommend looking it up yourself as well. There's many key factors in this article that relate directly to what I am talking about. Now here's another one. This is one that's important in my opinion. Uh, it's voice search, mobile devices, and text marketing online shopping statistics. 10% of online shoppers have used a voice home assistant to make a purchase at some point. That number is steadily increasing, which leaves out any option on eBay because they are not using the eBay search criteria to find those items. And as we know, the actual facts state that most people, the majority of searchers, do not go straight to eBay first. So that is a key factor there. Voice searches are more than 20% of searches in the Google app, which is the majority of searches, especially from your phone. A large number of people buy stuff from their phone. The vast majority do these days. So again, you're not going to get those search statistics that you are worried about by ending and relisting and all of those other aspects, just like going in and trying to edit them and saying it's going to refresh your listing. All it's going to do is do a minor refresh on the eBay site alone, which may not increase your sales at all because of keywords and other factors. There is no proof that that does anything, but there is proof that letting it set will actually increase your chances. That's why there's no option like that on Amazon and your items still sell. It's not important anymore. Ten years ago, people used to go straight to eBay for everything. It's not like that anymore. The reason being that people don't search straight from eBay is there are too many platforms online these days. The advance of all of these other platforms, whether it be Poshmark, Etsy, Amazon, Walmart, any of these other places, including eBay, have spread out the sourcing for this. So there's too many other options. So most people will go to the straight source search, which would be a Google search. So again, if you're killing your Google search, you're killing an opportunity. The majority of the opportunity is gone for you immediately. And another aspect here, 69% of smartphone users are more likely to purchase from e-commerce sites that give easy answers to their questions or concerns. Now this goes to having all your stuff and your information readily available, such as free returns and all of those other aspects of it. Price is a key factor too. That seems to be the biggest factor for most people searching and finding things. Again, there's two different avenues on this. There's the collectible side of it where it's not as important, and then there's the people that are selling clothing, books, and new items, returns, and electronics. So there's two different aspects of it. If you're selling electronics, clothing, and things like that, people are more cost-concerned. So there's two markets online. There is a generalization, though, that these numbers do stand for everything. So again, these are specific numbers and information that actually stand by what I am saying. It's just some facts in the presence. So again, I've talked about cross-listing and why cross-listing is so important now is because most people aren't going to a specific site. So if you have your items on, let's say, four or five sites, you've got a better chance in ranking higher in a Google search because if one site doesn't rank you higher, another one may. So this is why our business has increased and this actually works because we've based our decisions on these facts, the actual industrial facts which are available. You can look at Forbes, you can look at um, Wall Street Journal, they're going to tell you these same numbers. These same numbers are across the board in all industries and reported the same. So again, these aren't just one-offs, these aren't some strange things. These are multiple sites that these actual numbers are coming from. They're not just one company trying to steer it. And again, these are from companies who actually make their living coming up with these statistics. If they weren't correct, they wouldn't be making money at it. 
corporate America as well, uses these to increase their business. They know what they're doing, and if you look at any of these corporate reports that are doing well online, you'll see that these statistics were used to actually expand and increase their company's business. So again, if the big companies can do it, we can use the same exact information. This is all here. This is all important information. This is why I do what I do and where my information comes from. The key things, as I keep saying, is Google searches are the key as well as keywords. Those two things will push your sales faster and higher than anything else. So if you're ending your listings after a certain length of time, you're killing those big search results. Don't trust John Doe or Jane Doe on YouTube or anywhere else that are telling you that by doing this, you're going to get this huge boost that's going to increase your chances of selling it. It's not that way anymore. It's not like it used to be. Even eBay has stated that. So again, this is the facts here. Look at the facts, please, before you do stuff like that. You are really killing some of your chances on selling the items. There's pages of this information here. I've read it all, and I've read it all to adjust my business accordingly based on how people search. Phones are key. Phones are major issues these days for sales increases. You have to be doing this. So, and there's other statistics out here. 79% of Americans now shop online, but it's cost more than convenience that sways them. Now, that's a majority say that. And that's a majority of those, again, are relating to newer items, clothing, books, electronics, video games, DVDs, all of that sort of thing. They're looking for price. The amount of people that buy online or research has been growing. Age groups are not different anymore. Even older folks who in the past didn't do that are doing that now to stretch their money farther. People are catching on and they understand how this works these days. Ten years ago, that wasn't the case. There are certain categories, again, as I said, new retail, things along that line, RA items, all that kind of stuff. People are worried about cost. Collectibles now, on the other hand are different. They don't necessarily worry about cost. They worry about filling in the gap in their collection. So there's big differences in those two category uh, areas. So just keep that in mind when I'm talking about this. Now these are all, again, numbers that are important. It talks about how frequently people go, what they do. Many times nowadays people will go to a store, they'll price it online and decide whether to buy it in the store. I do that. Most people that I know do that as well. Get it as cheap as you can. Don't ever leave money on the table. Every dime counts these days. Every dime adds up. So if you save 20 cents every day of the week for every day of the year, you know, it adds up. You might be able to pay a bill or rent or something. So again, every dime does count. Now, here's a statistic here. 65% of online shoppers said if they needed to make a purchase, they'd compare real-world prices with those online and then buy where they could get the best deal. So that's a key factor in these numbers here. Many other aspects of this. Um, it just depends. Online reviews are key as well, too. So take that into consideration. Online reviews actually go into depth and actually the seller as well. So they will check into sellers to see what their feedback is. So anybody telling you that the feedback and reliability of the seller or the site are not important are not being honest with you. All of the industrial-wide statistics say otherwise. So I do trust these numbers. Corporate America uses these numbers. And if you've seen anything, about how well corporate America is doing, you would agree that these numbers should be correct and are usable numbers. So again, look at the statistics. Don't trust somebody to tell you it's going to work. It is probably killing your chances on selling some of your items. People are not just going to go and buy your item because you've refreshed it and it's fresh. If you don't have the right prices, you're not checking competitively on other sites, you're not doing correct keywords, you're going to kill your sales and it doesn't matter what you do. So again, don't just follow the lead of someone else. Look into the evidence yourself. The evidence states you should not do that. You should let your item run. Good till canceled is the way to go. That is a fact. Look at Amazon, look at Walmart, look at all the other sites that sell and keep their items running for an indefinite length of time. eBay has moved to this because they are pushing it to get ranks on Google. That is the key. You are just bypassing all of the hard work they've done to help your item sell by ending it and then relisting it or sell similar just to get a, a quick refresh for those few percentage of people that are looking for newly listed items. 
Other than that, it's not going to help you very much because, again, the keyword is the one important thing that you really need to pay attention to. Without a proper keyword, the SEO for that item is not going to go anywhere to begin with. It doesn't mean just jamming a bunch of keywords in there. You have to have relevant keywords. The actual search criteria these days, even in Google, Amazon, and eBay, will knock out some of those listings because of you spamming the keywords. They want something relevant. They are not worried about you putting 20 keywords into to a listing. They're worrying about you putting a couple good keywords in there that are relevant to the person trying to buy the item. Again, these are 100% based on actual statistics, not based on me thinking that it works or somebody telling me that they did something and it actually worked. These are actual statistics from multiple sites. Just like I said before, if you look up how long it takes to rank on Google, and you should do this if you want to be successful in the business, it could take 60, 90, 120 days to actually rank. Now, if you're on Etsy, you know it's like a four-month cycle, so that's a reason why some of this is done that way. That's the reason eBay has went to good tool canceled listings, because they're trying to rank them. Auctions are a fad that has started to go out and sway. Less and less people care about the auction. They would just rather have the item, even if they have to pay a little more. They don't have to mess around with being online, missing it, or any of these other factors. That is another statistic that is extremely high. The majority, the vast majority of people would rather just buy the item than do it as an auction. These are the buyers. These are the people that you want to sell your items to. So if you're not selling in the proper format, you are losing people. If you have bad return policies and things like that, you are killing it because there's too many other options. I know if you only sell on eBay, you don't get the whole big picture here, which I didn't either until I've expanded my business. But all these other sites have other options and offer possibly the very same item you are selling. Why would someone in their right mind want to buy it from somebody who doesn't allow you to return something when you can go to two or three other sites and buy the exact same item, maybe even for less, with a 100% return policy, with a seller with great feedback and great keywords to actually bring that item to you when you search. So these are all keys. You want to make some more money, let your items sit for a while, let them rank on Google, worry about the keywords, spend your extra time getting the best darn keyword you can get. Do a ton of comp searches to see what keywords sell the best for the most money. There's sites you can do it at if you sell on Amazon as we do. We do do SEO search sites as well. They can recommend the best keywords. I don't always do that for some items because sometimes just because it's the most searched or the best keyword stated on their site doesn't mean it would be the best keyword for a specific item. People do tend to follow suit sometimes and do the same thing as other people because that's what they think is the right thing to do. So there's many other aspects of this, but the facts, the research, the actual percentage percentages posted from sites like this are key types of information. Again, Forbes and Wall Street Journal post information just like this as well and may not be condensed into one site with all the information together, but they have many articles on it. I do read those tech articles and e-commerce articles all the time. Again, I sell on so many platforms these days that I have to. I have to know what's going on. If you're only on one site, you may not have the necessity to know all this stuff, but all this stuff is key important to your business because these figures are factual based on actual research and not conjecture. So anyway, that's what I have for you. Well, there you go. That's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas on this. Hopefully that gave you some thoughts. Hopefully you see the information for what it is. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.